Now I'm Mr. B and I'm back from the dead. Chillin' at the beaches down at Club Med. Make another video cause the people they were feeling it suck as they be saying they can take on Mr. Benedict. You're a three, we got clout. Other teachers, I'll put your head out. Alright, the first word in unit three is a lot. It's a verb and it means to dole out in shares or portions. So, the teacher allotted each student one textbook to start the year. Or, after the disaster, the government allotted a certain amount of food relief to the refugees. The next word is amass. It's a verb. It means to bring together, to collect, gather, assemble. So, all the students in the middle school amassed in the commons for the assembly. The next word is audacious. It's an adjective. It means bold, recklessly daring. So you could say, the invasion of Poland by Adolf Hitler was an audacious act, as it would surely bring war to Europe. The word audacious comes from the Latin, and if you want an easy way to remember it, remember the Latin phrase on my door, sapere aude. Sapere means to know, aude means dare. So, audacious, daring, aude, dare. The next word is comply. It's a verb, and it means to yield to a command or edict. So you could say, when Rosa Parks was asked to move to the back of the bus, she refused to comply, even though she knew that it would mean jail time. The next word is devoid. It's an adjective. It means not using or having, lacking. So you could say, can you imagine how terrible school would be if it was utterly devoid of laughter? The next word is elite, and it has two parts of speech, a noun and adjective. So as a noun, elite means the choice part of a group of people or things. So you could say, Gossip Girl is a TV show that takes you into the lives of Manhattan's elite, the upper class. As an adjective, elite means the best, superior. So you could say, the Navy SEALs are the elite forces in the United States Navy. They're the top of the top. The next word is grapple, and it also has two parts of speech. As a noun, you can use grapple to mean an iron hook used to latch onto something. So, in the Dark Knight movies, Batman uses a grapple to latch onto the sides of buildings and whatnot. As a verb, grapple means to struggle with, to fight with, to tussle with, to wrangle. So, you could say that after grappling for days with his decision, Martin finally figured out the right thing to do. The next word is incapacitate. It's a verb. It means to deprive of strength, to make legally ineligible. So you could say, after he was incapacitated by illness, the president could no longer carry out his duties. The next word is instigate. It means to stir up, to rile, to incite. So you could say, protesters in the streets attempted to instigate a riot, but cooler heads prevailed and there was no bloodshed. The next word is longevity, and it's a noun, and it means long life, in duration, a long period of living. So you could say, my great aunt Martha was blessed with longevity because she lived for 108 years. The next word is myriad, and it has two parts of speech. As an adjective, myriad means in very great numbers, uncountable. So you could say, on the internet, you can do research into myriad topics. As a noun, myriad just means a very great number. So you could say, in the jungle, there are a myriad of different life forms. The next word is perspective. It's a noun. It means the place or point of view from which something is looked at, either physically or mentally. So it can be literal or figurative. So you could say, from my perspective, the shape looked this way. But from my friend's perspective, it looked different. You could also use it figuratively and say, to learn to see from another person's perspective and understand their views is one of the most important parts of being a human. The next word is perturb. It means to trouble, to disturb. And so you could say, after I learned that my uncle had been in the mafia, I was deeply perturbed. You could remember perturbed by thinking of a word that kind of means the same sort of thing, disturb. And they both have that turb suffix on the end there, and you can say that if you're perturbed by something, you're probably also disturbed, you know, deeply disturbed by what you've heard. The next word is prodigious. 
It's an adjective. It means large in size or bulk, um, immense, great. So you could say, the young football player's talents were prodigious, but he didn't work very hard in practice. The next word is relevant. It's an adjective. It means connected to the matter at hand. So you could say, in class, during discussion, you should try to keep your comments relevant to the topic of the day and not go off on tangents. The next word is skittish. It's an adjective. It means easily frightened, uh, easily made nervous. So you could say that the young pony was extremely skittish when it was led into the starting gate at the racetrack, bucking and tossing its head. The next word is tether, and it has two parts of speech. It can be used as a verb, it can be used as a noun. So as a verb, tether means to tie to something else. So you could say, I feel tethered to my friends because of our deep bond that comes from years of friendship. As a noun, a tether just means a rope or chain used to tie something to something else. So you could say, I fastened my dog to the fence with a tether. Of course, this word is probably one that's near and dear to many of your hearts because of tether ball. In that case, the ball is connected to the pole by a tether. The next word is unison. It means sounding together in agreement or accord. So you could say, when my mother asked if my friends and I would like ice cream after the soccer game, we all responded in unison, all at once with a resounding yes. The next word is vie. It's a verb and it means to compete, to strive for superiority or for an advantage. So you could say, on the NASCAR track, the two drivers vied for first place as they approached the finish line. The next and last word is willful. It's an adjective that means stubbornly self-willed, deliberate, done on purpose. So you could say, the willful child refused to do the dishes even after being asked a third time by his mother. Or you could say that after deliberation, the jury decided that the killing had been a willful act of murder and sentenced the criminal to life. And that's it. All the words in Unit 3 for your perusal. Watch the video as many times as you need and come in ready to take your quiz. So, I'm going to sign off now. I will see you in Unit 4. The next word is incapacitate. It's a verb and it means, I don't know what it means. The next word is in, in, uh. The next word is incapacitate. It's a verb. It means to deprive of strength, to make legally ineligible.